Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the tank review for the brand new premium tier 7 American tank destroyer, the Super Hellcat. Now this is a Hellcat that is at tier 7 and it's basically better because, well it's got to be anti because it's been moved up a tier. And do I think that that move up a tier has hurt it? No, not at all. I think the stats that they've upped to make it a tier 7 have definitely helped it out and I think it's it's a pretty damn good little tier 7 TD to be honest. So let's get into the stats. You've got 167 AP penetration. Now that's 7 better than the Tech Tree Hellcat at tier 6 and you might be going, 7, seven better penetration on a tank destroyer for a tier higher? That's not great. Well, yeah, I mean 167 isn't the best, right? But it's still enough. And add to that 243 APCR penetration, which is the same as the standard Hellcat as well. Which, by the way, this is a buff from PC, if any of you were wondering, because PC only has 210 pen on this APCR. So that's just flat out worse for some reason. So thankfully that they've taken advice on board and changed it to 243, so it's the same as the Tech Tree one. That's good, because obviously 243 is enough to go through anything you'll meet at tiers seven eight nine pretty much and that's useful so that's great and let's have a quick look at the shell velocity which is the only thing you really need apart from, yeah it's the only thing you really need from the pc wiki for it and that is 853 meters out a second shell velocity on the ap and a 1021 on the apcr now it, we obviously used to be able to see this in game hopefully we'll be able to see it in game at some point in the near future whenever they release this new update and yeah, obviously, so we can't tell what the shell velocity actually is on our console, whether they've changed it or not. But it feels it feels about that. It feels right, you know, because I think that's pretty much the same as the actual standard Hellcat. So why would it change? It's got 240 alpha with its 90 millimeter gun, which is, you know, nice. Especially with the rate of fire, which we'll get into in a minute. 850 hit points is that up-tiered moment for the super hellcat because obviously it's only got 570 on the tier 6 that 850 is enough to take say two hits from 390 alpha guns which obviously you're going to see a little bit more being at tier 7 because you can see stuff like is's with 390 kv3s you know the soviet tanks with 390 alpha plus tier 8s that start to get those 390 alpha guns as well as the tier 9s so being able to take those two hits is a nice bit of like leeway if you make a mistake you can take two hits from 390 alpha guns and get away and that is a nice thing about the tank 72 kilometers an hour top speed is really nice and you it gets up to that it's a whip it it gets up to that top speed very easily it's very very nice i really like that top speed and it means you can relocate and flank really easily 380 meters view range is also very very nice you get 370 on the tier 6 so 10 meters extra for the tier 7 is nice it means you can actually spot for yourself really easily you just put coated optics on it get situational awareness born leader and all that and away you go you've got 445 plus meters view range which is really good like i say that's always nice you want to max out the view range as much as possible and it basically means that this tank isn't blind that's actually the same as a lot of tier 8 medium tanks 380 so that's that's just a nice thing to have and the other great thing about the super hellcat is the same as the tech tree tier 6 hellcat is that 37 percent camo that you see here on the hellcat it's beautiful honestly you work this up with some camo perks you really really do notice how stealthy this tank is you, there's so many situations where you just don't get spotted when you're firing at people they can be less than 200 meters away and you can be firing through a bush you just don't get spotted it's it's lovely and that is a great feature of the tank that you really want to be utilizing to great effect to have decent games in this thing so here's where it gets different to the hellcat as well so we'll have a go down here look so in the super hellcat you've got 8.45 rounds a minute so that's nearly a round a minute more than the tier 6 which honestly this reload being at 7.1 i think you can get it down to below to just above five seconds i think it was 5.3 something like that second reload and it's really good dpm you really feel how good that reload is and it means you can really put up a good fight against a lot of tanks and it also means that if so you catch someone out and you're in like a nice stealthy location, you can put the hurt into them really quickly, and that is great. 
So the aim time is 1.7 seconds, which means you just aim it, it just from fully stopped as well. The aim time is ridiculous. You, you zoomed in on the target really quickly. That's not that's something that's not changed from the tier six, which is good. So obviously that quick aim time will help you a lot to get zoned in on the targets and just get firing. And the bloom also doesn't feel that bad as well when you fired, so it doesn't take like forever to re re aim. A buff from the tier 6, you've got 47 rounds of ammo, which is, again, it's great to have. Because it's, quite often you run out with 30 rounds of thirty rounds of ammo in the tier 6 Hellcat. I ran out a lot in the Hellcat when I was when I used to play it. 47 is, is lovely. That extra 17 rounds really, really does make a difference. You've got 0.35 accuracy, which again is not changed from the tier 6, but that 0.35 is really nice, especially with 6.0 accuracy. It just means that you can get it down to about 0.27, something like that. And, yeah, it means it's super-duper accurate. That's great. 10 degrees of gun depression is lovely. That means you can utilize so many ridge lines. It's great. You don't have to have a worry about having to overexpose yourself to on ridge lines to get shots off. 10 degrees is great. You can use that to fantastic effect. 70 degrees of elevation as well. Well, it's elevation. You uh, means that you can at least look up a decent amount and you're not having to really struggle. Armor. Well, the Hellcat has no armor. That's just something. The Hellcat, it's a super Hellcat, right? If you expect to have armor in the Hellcat, then something's wrong. This this tank has no armor. Look, 12 millimeters. 12. All round. If you see one of these things, if you see a super Hellcat, you see a Hellcat, you just load HE in any tank, because HE in any tank can pen this thing, and you just blast away and have fun. The one thing you've obviously got to not do is shoot the gun mantlet, because obviously look at the gun mantlet. You might be going, well, if I fire Draugon Hesh or Charioteer Hesh and I've got 210 pen, I'm going to pen this thing every time. I'm going to pen this thing through the turret every time. Well, just be aware, right? Because it's a little bit, the gun mantlet is spaced armor, right? It's only a little bit of spaced armor, but it's just enough. It's just enough on the spaced armor that it will just get hit the gun mantlet and be absorbed, and therefore you'll splash them for like 200. You'll still hurt them, but you won't pen them for the 500 odd you're expecting. And it's something you've got to be aware of, pretty much. So, yeah, just try and avoid shooting the gun mantlet when you're using things like HE and shoot the bodywork. And even if you see in the turret look, just shoot the side here. It's It's got no armor. Don't, don't play this thing like you've got armor. You want to be that super, super sneaky TD pretty much the 16 degrees a second traverse on the oh wait this is actually the hellcat sorry let's go back to the super hellcat the 22 i thought that would look wrong the 22 degrees a second traverse speed on the hellcat is obviously something that's buffed from the 16 degrees a second so you really do notice the difference in the turret rotation on the super hellcat compared to the standard hellcat so yeah that's definitely something that is nice to have. Obviously, you could have the rapid aim skill on your crew to make this better. But, I mean, you'd probably make it only go up to about 24, 25 degrees a second. Which, again, is really nice and noticeable for a turret to TD. But it is a turret to TD. So, you don't really want to be relying on having a really quick turret. You want to maximise the other things about the tank. And we'll get into that when we see the crew skills. Like I say, 380 meters view range, lovely. 460 horsepower, which gives us 23.54 horsepower per ton. Now, everything is fully upgraded on this Hellcat, and it's only got 22.71%. So this Hellcat must be slightly heavier than the Super Hellcat for some reason. Who knows why? There's 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 no reason for it that we can actually, that we can actually see in game or on this Tankopedia. But uh, I mean. That means you will get up to your top speed incredibly quickly. You won't struggle up hills. It's really nice. Honestly, the top speed, the power to weight, is something that is fantastic about this tank. And it's fantastic about the standard Hellcat as well. And it's just great. And it's something you really want to look to utilise. 20 kilometers an hour reverse speed as well. Is that quicker? No, that's the same as the standard Hellcat. 20 kilometers an hour back is, is honestly fantastic to have in a tank. It means you can... Reverse round corner. If you make a mistake, drive around a corner and go, oh my god, that's a lot of tanks. You can pull back dead quickly around that corner, which is great. 20% fire chance, well, it's quite likely if you get shot through the back end or the side of this tank, you'll set it on fire. So you could consider 
firefighting, but at the same time, it's a tank where you want to try not to be taking hits, so you just bear that in mind. 34 degrees a second traverse speed on the tracks is 4 degrees better than the standard Hellcat. It's actually really nice. For, again, for a Turret TD, it traverses pretty damn well. And it feels more like a tier 7 medium at times with like super duper armor and a slow yeah, slow turning turret than a T20. Say, for the American tier 7 medium tank. You know, like you just basically the faster, more camoed, worse turret traverse than your Tech Tree Tier 7 medium tank version at the same nation, you know? And I, to be fair, when I played it, I played it a lot more like a medium tank than a TD. But it can do both. It's like that sort of hybrid, and that is a fantastic thing to have on a tank, really. And I, I really enjoyed playing this thing through to get the replays for this review. It's a pretty fun tank. If you like the Hellcat, you'll love this tank. And it, even the, though it's gone up a tier, like I say, the changes that they've made to the stats mean that it's still really competitive up a tier. And that is great. I really, I, I, say, I really enjoyed it. I know Swindle, when I was playing it with him, really enjoyed it. It's a fun tank. It's a Hellcat at the end of the day. And the Hellcat is a fun TD. But if you're not a fan of lightly armoured TDs and you like to have armour, this, this is probably not the tank for you, generally. So, I will send you over to the garage where we'll see the crew set up, the equipment set up, and I'll go through why and my rationale between, behind my crew for this tank. So, I'll see you over at the garage. So, here we are in the garage with the Super Hellcat. And, well, if you, if you uh, look at this, you would be mistaken for thinking it was just a Hellcat. Well, it, it pretty much is just a Hellcat. There's not much difference between the looks of this and the standard Hellcat, except for you've got this lovely little lady on the front of the tank. It's a very good-looking skin, really, for the tank. I think it looks great. There is actually a skin for the tank if you buy it. I've got this current on loan from Wargaming, but I didn't get the skin, and it's not available to actually purchase. So I can't show you that, unfortunately. So let's go into the stats and what I equip on it. So, obviously we've got the Prem Consumables for that reusable ability because that's just something you really want and you really need. Equipment wise, we've got a rammer, optics and a camo net. Now, camo net because this thing is incredibly stealthy and you really want to buff that up as high as possible. I mean, we've got 223 meters still concealment. That is fantastic honestly it's someone's gonna have to get within that sort of range sorry to be able to spot us and have like a great view range and honestly this is something that you really want to be putting on your stealthy tds is this camo net because you want to be able to maximize your you just want to maximize the camo really as much as possible now the camo net used to be something obviously that you might take on some tanks, but to be honest, there was a lot of tanks that I would, I just wouldn't run the camo net on because you had to wait that couple of seconds for it to activate. But obviously nowadays, the camo net's always active. So that having that camo net be always active and always reducing your camo is a fantastic thing for these TDs, honestly. It's, it's kind of nuts that it's like that. And it really just helps these tanks out a lot. I run the optics because you want to boost the view range up as much as possible. Like I say, I mean, you see with the vision range there, we've got 443 meters. And obviously, having food on that, that's without the food boost as well. Because it doesn't affect your effective values. So that'll be higher as well with the extra 10%, 15%, as well as when you boost it with using the food. So you're looking at probably like 440, well, 445 plus there. And like, you just want to be boosting that view range as much as possible with the optics. Rammer, obviously, you want to boost that DPM up 10% better all the time. I mean, you don't really want to be running... The, uh, GLD improves the aim time by 12%, but you've already got 1.7 second aim time. The 1.7 second aim time is fantastic. You don't really need to buff that up. And there's not really any other pieces of equipment that I'd probably take. Because the advanced reload is something that you might think about. But at the same time, again, it's not worth it taking it over the other three. Because you have a fast reload anyway, so you can just press A, wait to reload the shell in like five point something seconds, and then fire, and you may as well. 
So in terms of what I've effectively got the gun down to, by the way, as well, is 0.28 accuracy, which is fine. Obviously, that's really good. It's not the most accurate you can get it down to really in 6.0 terms in comparison to what a lot of the guns are like now. But 0.28 is fine. That is great with what you've got on the crew skills. And obviously, it's a TD, so you want to make your gun as good as possible because the, the whole point of you being a TD is being a tank destroyer, right? Then the gun destroys the tanks. So, let's have a look at the commander. Now, there's obviously stuff you can do. This is all down to personal preference, this this tank, really, to be honest with the crew. Now, I ran a pretty standard setup for a lot of crews that I've run for, like, medium tanks that are more stealthy and TDs that are more stealthy. Sometimes I might switch out, depending on how their gun handling is, I might switch out certain perks to make things different, right? So, I run Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Sixth Sense, Camouflage Expertise, Situational Awareness, Track Mechanic... Run and gun, steady aim, and muffled shot. Now, I run camouflage expertise and muffled shot because, again, I want to make the most out of the camo, right? And muffled shot, I run over green thumb in this sort of area because, uh, well, green thumb basically improves your camo while you're in a bush by, what is it, 10%? Yeah, 10%, right? But the... Muffled shot perk for me is way more worth it because it decreases your effect of firing on your camo by 35%. So if you're sat behind a bush, if you fire and use your gun, which is what you're going to be doing in the TD, it means that generally you're not going to get spotted as easily when you fire if you weren't using, you know, more than if you weren't using this perk. Obviously, you want to buff it up with camouflage expertise as well. Now, you could be thinking, well, why don't you just run green thumb as well and drop like either steady aim or run and gun well this gun needs to be obviously it's got the 0.35 accuracy you want it's a td as well like you say you want to be buffing the gun up as much as possible so the reason i use steady aim and run and gun is because i want to be making my gun as accurate as possible 10 percent increase to accuracy is always what you want and the run and gun sometimes you might get caught out while you're running and you just want to pop a shot on the move auto aim or something and with the run and gun 10 percent increase to accuracy when you're moving it just means you're going to hit those shots more often and it can clutch out things as well and that's why i run it like that obviously it's personal preference you can change that with obviously situational awareness trap mechanic sixth sense rapid loading and born leader being sort of core skills that you are going to be running on pretty much every tank anyway so that's why i run those skills like i say the skills is purely personal preference because you could also drop out be thinking, oh, you know what, I'm not going to be firing on the move all that often. I'm going to drop out, run and gun for rapid aim to increase the turret rotation on the Super Hellcat. Because obviously the Super Hellcat has a slow turning turret. Well, yeah, I mean, you could do that. And that's true, like I say. I mean, the turret rotation isn't the best because it's a turret to TD, so that's how it should be. So if you want to make that turret rotation better, use rapid aim. Honestly, it's up to you. It's personal preference, but I, I'm i not too fussed about the turret rotation. I expect it to be bad. Therefore, I buff everything else about the tank possible with this. In terms of shells, by the way, I run 25, 20, and 2. It's got a fast reload. You do burn through these shells quite quickly. You will feel it. But take 20 APCR just for that moment that you get in one of those horrendously tier 9 games and you really need the help of the 243 pen when 167 isn't quite enough so as always everybody I'm going to send you over to the replays where you can watch those, make your mind up, think while you're watching them, oh that guy's talking a load of Tosh in the garage and on the stats that tank looks garbage or you can watch it and think oh he's talking, he's talking it up and to be fair it looks really good it's up to you again it's whether it's your kind of tank so as always everybody i will see you in the replays so here we are in the replays with the super hellcat we're on port and we're tuned up with turkey and swindle and you can just see how quick this tank is it's quite nice for getting up to that top speed that's the question. Is it better than the Hellcat 105, which is a tier lower and has that 350 alpha gun if you're firing heat? I'd probably say it's on a par, but the Super Hellcat is is very accurate compared to the Hellcat 105, but the Hellcat 105 just has that mean alpha. But obviously there's a lot of things about the Super Hellcat that is just better than that tank. 
and why I'm saying this is because I just saw the Hellcat 105 and I just thought about it. Obviously, this, the Hellcat 105 has that sort of even worse turret traverse, the dispersion values like that, just the gun that's worse but has better alpha, all those sorts of things. And obviously, I like the Hellcat 105 because the, the 350 alpha that you get on the heat rounds is just dirty and it's really nice to have. But yeah, this tank is still good though. It's good fun. If you've got the Hellcat 105, would I say that you definitely need this tank? Well, probably not, because you're going to get the same flavour of tank, really. In a premium tank, anyway. So, I've taken up this aggressive position on port here, because from here, you can get good shots along this line here of people that sort of camp in these areas, like where this forcing that was shot earlier on, the buggy, the T29 that's hauled down... You never know, we might be able to get shots if they try and push out. And it's just all of a waiting game, really, to see if we can get shots at these guys. This T29 is hull down, which, yeah, is a bit of a pain. And he's looking... Uh, right, I'm unspotted there, and you see the shot words pass. And it was kind of like, that guy's looking directly at me. Hmm, that's suspicious. And I thought, no, I'm, he's going to take a shot, I'm going to pull back. And it's actually because I didn't realise that basically the whole team is along this D-line. And I'm the one that's in front of all of them. So they were all spotted behind me. Which obviously shows you just how good the camo is on this tank. They were all spotted behind me. And that meant that he was shooting at them. But was actually shooting at me because I wasn't spotted in front of them all. Pain. We come around this corner. We get some shots into this Leo. We shot him down with the great rate of fire. And now there's a challenger. And I'm going to try and track this guy. We pin him in place. He uses his repair kit, gets round. Now, obviously, I, I don't want to be here because look at their team, where their team is now. Try and pop a shot, free aim at the Cromwell. He ends up penning me, but I'm off because their team is all in this area. My team's all towards where I'm running away to now. I don't want to get caught out there. Obviously, I am a paper TD, and obviously, I don't really have too much hit points. So, in that situation, it was best to just risk it, drive in front of where they were all coming out, and just uh, risk taking the hit basically to get out and use my gun and keep it in the game so we get a nice shot into that Cromwell as he drove up on the bridge we're trying to see if we can get a shot at this T29 but he's in an awkward spot try and pot, pot shot it into the top of his turret it actually ricochets which is obviously the T29's turret is a hard one to pen and we're just going to go after this 25 TP here and shut him down and hopefully get some more flanking shots at these guys as we come around the corner. So we've got a T-34-100 at the end of the road. We get a nice shot into him. I'm going to pull back behind here so that he doesn't get shots at us, basically. And now we're unspotted. We can poke out and do what we want. But they've actually run away and gone towards... I don't know if that's Swindle or Turkey because they're both in TDs. They've gone towards one of our platoon mates anyway. And it's like, okay, I need to get out. I need to get, get closer, sorry, and get more damage out of these guys. We load APCR because we saw the Black Prince, and the Black Prince is, is like 200mm frontally, so I was like, I'm not really going to pet it with the AP, so we'll load APCR. But he's actually on the other side of the buildings, which was like, oh, alright, okay. And so I reload the AP. We come around the corner on this buggy, auto aim was shot into him, you saw the great drive in there, helps spin me around. We finish off that buggy, and now we've got this IKV 65-2 in front of us. We're just going to pop some shots into him. Also got the back end of this T29. And we're just going to put some shots into these guys and hopefully sort of distract them from my teammates that are in front of him. And I'm staying safe from the IKV using this cover here. And the IKV goes, get down, Mr. President, and saves the T29, which I'm pretty sure he didn't mean to do. We actually miss a shot on the side of the T29's turret. He manages to get a shot into us, but we shut him down. And fortunately enough for me, I think it's Swindle that misses the Black Prince. Someone else misses. The Black Prince then finishes off Swindle, which means I get the shot into the Black Prince and finish him off. So we finish that game with the epic victory. We finish with 6 kills, 3.4k damage, 720 assistance. Nice amount of credits as well. Ace Tanker, crucial contribution, top gun, high caliber, because we managed to get 12 kills between the three, three of us there. 932 base XP, which is nice. And yeah, a great game for the tank in a map that's probably not really suited for it. This, and that's, yeah, obviously because it's a city map, right? It's a very small spaced map. A map like this is more the Super Hellcat's cup of tea. And we're on Fisherman's Bay. 
And this game on Fisherman's Bay is really going to show off what this tank can do with its absolutely amazing camo. And what we're going to do is go to the normal position. You'll be, you'll be like looking at this going, yep, yeah, he's going to that same place that he always goes to, E6. It's because I can't tell you enough how good this position at E6 actually is. If you get up to it, you can spot out people crossing, get nice shots into them as they try and get into the town. It's great. So you see we've actually pushed in and we've spotted two heavy tanks as they're going towards the town. This light tank's yellowed in front of us and managed to actually get a shot into us as yellow's passed, which is annoying. We tried to shoot the Churchill, but unfortunately missed the first one. We penned the second one, and I'm just hiding behind this house, hopefully not taking any more shots. And I'm just waiting to get unspotted, and we're actually going to move further up, because that position I was in then at the start is actually very dangerous to be in, because you've only got the house to use as cover, and that sometimes can be just not enough, and you get spotted, you can die very easily in that position. So we're looking for shots at the Churchill, but obviously can't see him right now. I'm, I was thinking about shooting this building down in front of me because that building is fairly annoying, but I don't do it. Pull back behind the bushes again. Snap a shot at the Yag Panther. Unfortunately, just missed the Yag Panther. We get a shot into the tracks of the VK next, which is what I was aiming for. We end up breaking his engine and tracking him, and we put another shot in. He unfortunately gets some spotted. And this is where the Hellcat is great because obviously you can just use these bushes to good effect, keep your camo up. And stay safe now obviously unfortunately for me that snake bite yolo's past which lights us up there's nothing really actually looking at us there which is nice we get a nice shot into that vk there i thought i was gonna miss and now the yag panthers caught out in the open we aim for a shot through the tracks which we actually hit and pen but unfortunately that yag panther disappears again the snake bite is coming back on his yolo he gets tracked we pop a nice shot in hopefully he'll get killed because he's been a pain in the ass we're looking for the shot to kill him. We've shot him down. And now we can pull back and get some more shots into this EZ8 that's sat here. We aim for the tracks again to try and put him in place. Because obviously this, this tank has very good reload. It has good DPM. So if you track people, more often than not, especially at this tier, you're going to track them, you're going to pen them, and you're probably going to pin them in place until you're reloaded again. Because they won't get the tracks back on as quickly as you reload. So unfortunately we get spotted there. We'll try and pop a shot at the EZ... Not the EZ8, the VK3... 3000 and what is it is a 3601H or 3001H one of the two anyway the t I think it's the tier 6 so it's the 3601H we unfortunately ended up missing it that Yag Panther is still alive down there it was kind of a squeaky bum moment if I'm totally honest when we got spotted there because I thought I was probably going to die and get shot up by things that were hiding that I was not been spotted we got a nice shot into the top of that Yag Panther there I was kind of doubting whether I was going to pen it we end up ricocheting the 88 there. Don't ask me how. This tank has no armor. Well, it does have 127 millimeters of armor on the back of the turret, which you might get the odd ricochet off, which is probably what he hit. But, yeah, bouncing is not a thing that the Hellcat generally does. So that was quite a nice thing to have. So now we unfortunately get spotted by the heavy tank that's in front of us, which is a Tiger 131, which is deadly. I've not quite reacted to the fact that there's a Tiger 131 sat in front of me. I've just got unlimited target range here. And now I'm deciding, yeah, okay, there's a heavy tank sat just up there. That's bad news for me if he decides to come and get me. He's ended up killing the KV-85 that was just behind me. You see he's coming over there. It's like, no, I need to get back behind this building. And we're just going to keep pummeling shots at this British Bulldog because he is, at the minute, holding up our team as they're coming out of the town. Unfortunately, we end up missing there, so we're boosting the food here to boost the view range, keep him lit, and hopefully get the accuracy a little bit better. We kill him then, and we've now got some shots at this Tiger 131. We get a shot into him, pull back behind the building to stay safe. And I'm just looking to see if I've got shots at the artillery. I don't quite have the shots there. Um, I'm just turning myself now because I want to basically keep poking to get shots at that guy i'm looking to see if i can get shots at this stern but that big rock's in the way and i actually think the tiger 131 is now no longer looking at me he actually ends up shutting our friend down which is kind of awkward because i was wanting to use that distraction to go and put some shots into him but we're just gonna hope that he drives out and he actually fortunately enough for me he does and we don't actually pen him there we just track him but here's where the good reload comes in look we managed to put another shot in before he's put his tracks back up. 
Now he's a 215 health. He's pretty much a one shot for me. So we pop a shot through. It's, thinking about it, it's kind of risky because we got 240 alpha right. But damage RNG changes mean that that 215 is a lot less safer for me possibly killing him than would first appear. Because the amount of times you roll for about 200 rather than 210, 215, 220 is just mental. Because damage RNG is silly now. But luckily enough... Despite the damage RNG changes, we ended up managing to shut down the Tiger 131, and now there's just one tank alive, and it's this VK 3002D, which is the tier 7, is it the tier 7? I think it's the tier 7, yeah, the tier 7 German medium tank, and we're just looking for shots at this guy. Now, obviously, this guy is a little bit of awkward at times, because... He's got random ricochet angles, but fortunately enough, we've managed to pen him a couple of times. He ends up stopping, which is annoying because that means we don't quite get the shot into him. We end up, there we go, ricocheting off the 3002D, unfortunately, but we're looking for the final shot to finish him off. And it flies true and finishes off that German tier 7 medium tank. And that was another nice game for the Super Hellcat. Showed off just what the gun can do at range. Showed off the good camo of the tank. The good mobility to get into the positions. And just generally a nice game for the tank. So we finished with 5 kills. 4.8k damage. 624 assistance. 115 credits made again. It's decent at making credits. Ace tanker. High caliber. That's said the 2.3k base. And the Super Hellcat. It's a tier 7 Hellcat. That has. That is just pretty nice to play generally. It's a decent tank. So as always everybody. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. You're great success.